Charles Lister is a senior fellow and director of extremism and counterterrorism at the Middle East Institute. He joins us now from Washington. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us on the news hour. Uh, Idlib has uh, been for a while now the uh, largest remaining rebel stronghold in Syria. How imminent might a government offensive be into the heart of Idlib? It's pretty hard to tell at this point. I mean, obviously, tensions are as high as they've been for a very long time. But I think all of the major actors involved, are probably including the regime, know that the task ahead for a major escalation in hostilities towards the heart of Idlib is, uh, you know, a major, major undertaking with serious, serious risks for all involved. So at the moment, as I think as your package just said, um, we seem to have seen a return to diplomacy for now um, after a significant ratcheting up of tensions. The danger, of course, is that there's a great deal of spoilers involved here. Um, uh, that could potentially create the conditions in which hostilities just happen, whether or not any of the major stakeholders involved want it to or not. So I think the eyes need to be on those kind of actors, the groups linked to al-Qaeda, as well as um, the diplomatic initiatives, which mostly are happening behind the scenes at the moment, but appear to be significant enough that tensions have definitely reduced over the last 24 hours. You have an array of different groups that are active in Idlib, at the moment, how would a, a government campaign into the province, what, how would it affect the environment? What would they be getting involved in? Sure. Well, I mean, I imagine if there was a major escalation in hostilities, the vast majority of armed groups in Idlib would end up fighting against it. There are active regime attempts, and there have been for quite some time, um, to, to undermine portions of the opposition, to encourage them to engage in what the regime calls reconciliation, um, what basically amounts to severe pressure ending up in uh, surrender and deals with the government. Um, but, but I think when, when push comes to shove, and if hostilities really did um, explode in the northwest, of Syria, um, the threat that that represented would probably, at least in an interim period, result in the vast majority of those groups fighting. And that means the entire array, basically, um, of the Syrian armed opposition plus al-Qaeda. So very moderate free Syrian army groups, which do remain active on the ground, who have had long-standing relationships with the international community, going up all the way through the, the kind of ideological um, periphery through the Muslim Brotherhood, up to more committed Salafist groups like Ahr al-Sham, then going to Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, HDS, and all the way up to and including um, the groups that are now more overtly allied with al-Qaeda. That whole um, array of groups would almost certainly end up resisting an armed campaign. Um, but how that progressed over time, I think, would remain to be seen, especially looking at the periphery. Well, one thing that is certain is that uh, a broad-based government campaign would have serious humanitarian costs. We know that Turkey has long struggled to deal with refugees in and around its border with Syria. Would Turkey intervene to stop a government campaign in Idlib? Well, you're right to, to point to the humanitarian effects. I mean, a, a major escalation in hostilities in Idlib would make every single other conflict in Syria look like a drop in the ocean in comparison. The area is currently home to about at least three million people, about a third of whom are already internally displaced. Um, in terms of the Turks, that has a major implication. They've solidly shut down the border with Idlib, and they've said they have no intent of reopening it up. So the humanitarian catastrophe that would result inside Syria would be huge. Turkey obviously also has other concerns with regards to terrorism, both from al-Qaeda and PKK-affiliated groups like the YPG, which has suggested in recent days that it might be willing to cooperate with a regime offensive into Idlib. So would the Turks intervene, as you question? Um, I think the chances are more likely that they would. I think what the reason why we've seen a diplomatic uptick in the last few days is because Turkey forced um, the restart or the reinitiation of diplomatic talks on this issue. They've very cl clearly labeled the Idlib question a red line. And I think at least for now, they intend to abide by that. Thank you very much. I appreciate your analysis on this story. Charles Lister, a senior fellow and director of extremism and counterterrorism there at the Middle East Institute in Washington.